the Super Nintendo and the JRPG. These two go together like peanut butter and jelly. To this day, many fans of the genre consider this console to be the home of the best of the best. Between this and the PlayStation later on, Square was at their prime. Of course, this isn't to say that other developers didn't put out beloved RPGs, Earthbound being one of them. So today, I'm going to be pitting it in a battle royale alongside Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger, and Super Mario RPG. I'll be granting each game points based off of how well it does in each category. These include the combat, story, characters, music, and so on. Without further ado, let's figure out which of these JRPGs is the best. The world and lore make up the core of an RPG, but a game with a wide open area to explore is only as fun as the way you get around in it. How are the levels designed? How much can you explore? How do you move from A to B? Chrono Trigger, being a game where you explore multiple time periods, easily wins in this regard. The structure of the game is fairly open-ended. Once you get to the end of time, you're given a fair bit of freedom to go through the different time periods until you feel ready to fight Lavos. Being a Mario spinoff, Super Mario RPG incorporates the platforming gameplay of its home series. This gives field areas a unique flavor compared to others at the time, as there's a lot more to them other than being filler for encounters with the occasional puzzle. Final Fantasy VI, for the most part, is a typical game in the series in terms of area design. There are some unique ones like the Phantom Train and the Phoenix Cave, but they're the exception. It also doesn't help that the game seems to love its caves a bit too much. The world of Ruin does make up for the linearity, but you still have to get through one entire half of the game for that. Then we have Earthbound. Now, to its credit, the way it handles exploration isn't all bad. The towns are nice and big, which makes them feel a lot more like proper societies, and the decision to forego a world map was a bold one. There's just one problem. You're too slow! I'm sorry, did I just travel back in time? But in all seriousness, I mean it. Unless you're eating skip sandwiches constantly, you move around at a snail's pace. This doesn't help by the game giving you a bike to make you faster, only to quickly take it away. Heck, even the teleporting is annoying. While these are turn-based RPGs, two of them using the Final Fantasy ATB system, each of them do have some sort of uniqueness to them that allows us to look at them in different ways. Super Mario RPG starts off with having a more skill-based system compared to the others. Not only do you need to worry about the stats and equipment like any RPG, you also need to time your button presses in order to do the real damage and block attacks efficiently. This leads to a faster, more active, and really more engaging system than the others. Earthbound is pretty basic. However, the HP rolling mechanic is a godsend if you're quick enough. Taking damage means the HP counter rolls down, and if you can heal before it stops, you can reduce damage or even prevent yourself from dying against fatal attacks. Chrono Trigger uses the same ATB system as Final Fantasy IV through IX uses, but what is unique about it is that there is a higher focus on positioning depending on where you and your party ends up will differ on who can attack what. Plus, there are some fancy combination attacks, so it pays well to experiment. Final Fantasy VI admittedly is pretty basic, as it is the simple ATB battle system mentioned before. Each character does have unique actions to them, which allow for many different options. However, like most Final Fantasy games, it is easy to break and exploit, making the game child's play if you go that route. This especially includes the Esper system. role-playing as characters in this role-playing game, so it's important we feel connected to them, or at the very least get invested in them. Final Fantasy VI kinda has a no contest win here just due to the diversity and size of the party. Celis and Locke are the popular picks for most people, though the same can be said for Terra, Sabin, Edgar, Shadow, and almost all of them. 14 playable characters can do that. To be frank, it was actually a bit too ambitious, but it did work out in the end. Really, the only forgettable characters are the optional ones. Super Mario RPG was credited for bringing forth more unique characters compared to previous games, especially with the introduction of Malo and fan favorite Gino. Plus, it can also be praised for how it redefined Peach and Bowser as characters thanks to the more narrative structure, something that would become normal in future Mario RPGs. 
Chrono Trigger's main cast can be separated into two categories. Good, frog, meh, the rest. Oh, okay, okay, that's just me. Each of the characters are unique, but they do fall into their tropes a bit too much. Besides Frog, Robo and Maga stand out a little bit more, but everyone else is just okay. No one's bad, just a little better than average. Unfortunately, Earthbound's party doesn't really interact with you all that much. They are vocal prior to joining and have a few lines at a couple points, but for the most part, they don't have much dialogue to flesh themselves out after joining. At least not until you fight Gai but by then, you don't have much of a connection with them. Every protagonist needs a good antagonist. What are we going with? Okay, I might be a little biased since Final Fantasy VI is my favorite and Kefka is the mascot of my channel, but you can't doubt he's one of the best villains in gaming. He's one of the few that actually succeeded in destroying the world. As for the others, Gestal is a very love to hateable Saruman Hitler. Ultros, on the other hand, is such a fun meme lord and coward that definitely makes an impression on the party and the player. Earthbound's villains are a bit weirder. Gygus is an alien that became too powerful and unruly due to his connection with the human, causing him to affect everything despite not having any control and becoming a force of evil himself. Doesn't make much sense, but at least you remember it. Porky, conversely, is such a little brat who does nothing but cause trouble for Ness and others due to his jealousy of Ness. In a way, both are very immature, which fits since the main protags are 10 to 12. Chrono Trigger has interesting villains from different time periods like Azala and Queen Zeal, though the two most interesting ones are Magus, a mage from antiquity who becomes a demon lord to try and destroy Lavos, and then there's Lavos himself, an alien parasite whose core wants to harvest the DNA of the Earth to replicate itself, and that allows him to alter the world's past and future. Ooh, some stakes there. Super Mario RPG has a lot of one-off villains within the Smithy Gang, each with unique personalities that fit within the Mario universe, but after their fights, they don't really leave much of an impact. Some of the ones who did, though, were the Axum Rangers, Valentina and Smithy himself, but really mostly the Axum Rangers. The other ones are just kind of boring. So how do we judge a story? Is the story easy to follow? Does it keep you interested? What themes does it explore? For being a game all about time travel, Chrono Trigger manages to make its plot fairly coherent and grandiose at the same time. The game also manages to use its relatively short length to its advantage. The storyline is tightly plotted with little in the way of filler. Final Fantasy VI's storyline uses its ensemble cast to its advantage, giving every major character a clear arc and development. The only issues are with occasionally slow pacing due to all the exposition and the amount of characters. Earthbound is often seen as a coming of age story, albeit a very cosmic sort of one. The one problem, at least in my opinion, is that it just feels too... subtle. Once again, the mostly silent party doesn't help. Super Mario RPG, being the first ever Mario RPG, doesn't have a plot that goes far beyond the basic collect the MacGuffins to stop the big bad evil guy setup. It's not terrible, but it's not terribly interesting. If we need to save the world, then we need to have proper motivation to do so. What's in it, and why should we want to save it? Earthbound, while not being the first RPG to use a modern setting, is easily the one that perfected it. The lighthearted imitation of idyllic America makes the game feel very familiar and gives it a unique standpoint compared to other RPGs at the time. The writing for the NPCs is also incredibly funny, which really gives you an incentive to, well, interact with them. And the more you interact with them, the more you care about them. In terms of variety, Chrono Trigger is a winner. The game gives you a pretty big variety of environments to explore, ranging from traditional high fantasy to futuristic to even prehistoric. Super Mario RPG's setting is, well, the Martian Kingdom. It's not necessarily a bad thing, however. The RPGs have given the area a lot more identity over the years, and this is no exception. The only real issue is the lack of variety compared to the other Mario games. Well, then again, it's not like any of us missed the ice levels. Fortunately, it's made up for by having some fairly engaging NPCs. Final Fantasy VI has, well, 
a fantasy setting. This was before the series introduced all the crazy sci-fi and modern elements that went on to define their worlds. The unique factor in Six comes in the form of the steampunk elements, which, while neat, don't really influence the setting all that much. It has some fun NPCs, but compared to the others, you're not super torn up if they get offed. Once again, the world of Ruin is where things get interesting, but you still have to come a long way to get there. Don't want to play a game if it's butt ugly, do ya? Sure hope not. Let's see who's the fairest of them all. Chrono Trigger is lauded for its art style and character designs done by none other than the mangaka of Dragon Ball himself, Akira Toriyama. In addition, the game made a bold move by featuring far more realistically proportioned sprites than others at the time. This allowed for elaborate animations in both cutscenes and combat, which really sells a lot of the game's big moments. For Final Fantasy VI, this was where the series really came into its own as the graphical powerhouse we know it as today. The backgrounds got a huge upgrade, getting multiple layers to create scenes that still look impressive by today's standards. Seriously, just compare some of the backgrounds from 5 to 6. The character sprites got a similar upgrade, completely eschewing the tiny overworld sprites while giving the characters some genuinely expressive animations. Super Mario RPG had a very unique style with its pseudo 3D claymation feel along with some charming and expressive animations for the characters. The only real downside and why I had to knock it down a few pegs is the particle effects for the spells and such are a bit lacking. Then we get to Earthbound, which I always found a bit, well, ugly. The sprites, while cute in their own sometimes hideous way, always felt kind of muddy looking. As for the fight visuals, they're good, but a bit too much on the trippy side for my tastes. Sound design adds a lot to the experience, especially the music, which really helps with setting the mood. Final Fantasy VI's soundtrack still has one of the best RPG tracks around. You have the timeless Terra's theme, the catchy, decisive battle, and the famous opera Aria di Mezzo Caratere. Say that one three times fast. Honestly, Final Fantasy VI could win just because of the four-part saga that is Dancing Mad. Kefka is going mad, and we are dancing to the symphony. Chrono Trigger's music can be considered timeless. Oh, yeah, because of the time travel. Yeah. The main theme revs you up for an epic adventure. Character themes like Frog's theme and Robo's theme are catchy and epic. Though Robo's theme is a rickroll. Listen to it again if you don't believe me. Corridors of Time is literally timeless. And World of Revolution reps everything for a final confrontation. Ah, so good. Unfortunately, things aren't as impressive for the last two. Super Mario RPG's tracks tend to be more catchy, but unfortunately, they're less memorable. Besides Beware the Forest Mushrooms, which is an earworm, the rest of the soundtrack is hard to remember. Also, the boss theme is pretty bland. Kind of weird considering Yoko Shimomura of Kingdom Hearts fame did the soundtrack. Earthbound has a couple interesting tracks, and they are the final battle themes of Porky and Gygus. Most of the other tracks in the game are kind of annoying and hard to listen to. The game did have three different composers, which might explain the differing and inconsistent quality. But what if you just want to screw around? Be free to do whatever you want. Well, Final Fantasy VI definitely takes a while to get going in terms of optional content, but once it does, it goes all the way. Once you get the airship in the World of Ruin, you can pretty much do whatever you want. In addition to all the character recruitment quests, there are optional characters, dungeons, the Colosseum, or if you're really good at breaking the game, you can try and beat it with only three characters. There's so much you can do with this. Chrono Trigger style quests come in the form of the character quests, which tie in pretty nicely to the arcs of the party members. You also get plenty of replay value through the New Game Plus and the multiple endings. Super Mario RPG, while not a standout when it comes to the side quests, does include some in the form of the various mini games you encounter throughout the story. Plus, it has a pretty cool throwback super boss in the form of Kulex. And Earthbound has... Uh, well, uh, the interactive epilogue is pretty neat. <laughs> Let's get one thing out of the way here. Each of these games are good in their own way. They all have their various strengths and weaknesses. The purpose of this video wasn't to compare them objectively, but rather to talk about my own personal opinions on them. It's just a goofy video, don't take it as fact. 
Okay, okay, with all that out of the way, here are my final thoughts. My personal favorite is Final Fantasy VI for many reasons, mostly because the characters and music knock it out of the park. Yes, the gameplay balance is virtually non-existent, but come on, Final Fantasy games have never been known for not being broken. Chrono Trigger is easily the most refined RPG experience in terms of all the aspects. Everything is consistently good, and notice it never placed fourth in any category. If I were to recommend only one game on this list, it'd definitely be this one. Super Mario RPG was an unexpected, successful experiment, paving the way for Mario and Luigi and Paper Mario, so it clearly did something right, and we owe a lot to it. Earthbound is, well, Earthbound is certainly unique. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but I personally feel that it's more fun to analyze as art rather than enjoy as a good video game. And that's it! I'm the Fiery Joker, and I'm sure no one's going to be upset at these rankings at all. God.